There's no doubt that Angular's got a lot of features that make it a really attractive framework to use. And if you're anything like me, you were probably attracted to it for some features like two-way data binding, where you can bind an input field to a text element, and then anything you type into that input field automatically gets reflected back in the text element. So features like this are definitely really cool, and there's definitely a lot of other features that make Angular a great framework to use, but Angular's also got some drawbacks. The first drawback is that Angular has a steep learning curve, and so perhaps you've already come across some tutorials on the web on how to use Angular. Maybe you've done the introductory tutorial on the AngularJS homepage, and maybe what you've found is that it can be easy to get started with Angular, but going beyond a simple hello world example actually gets pretty tough. There's a lot of details packed into how to properly use the framework, and this can definitely be a big stumbling block for new users. It's got a steep learning curve also because there are a lot of unfamiliar terms used in the framework. You'll hear names tossed around like transclusion and dirty checking and factories. And these are, for the most part, especially for newer developers, really unfamiliar terms. Something else that makes Angular tricky to learn is that there's very often more than one way to get something done with the framework. And this can leave people confused as to what's the best way to do something or what's the best practice. And what makes matters worse is that very often when people are talking about certain ways to do things in Angular, terms will get conflated and confused. Aside from just using the framework as a developer, one of the drawbacks of the framework is that it can be bad for SEO, or search engine optimization. And this isn't so much a problem that's limited to Angular, but rather it's a problem with single page apps as a whole. And the issue is that because single page apps load a single page with very little content to start with and then dynamically generate content with XHR requests, well, Google doesn't have a way to crawl that content because it's not initially loaded on the page until an XHR request is made. And there are some ways to get around this. There are some third-party libraries out there that can pre-render content so that SEO can be improved. But in general, it's just a little bit more difficult to get a good SEO ranking with an Angular application. One of the major gripes that a lot of people have with Angular is that performance can be poor in some circumstances. And this might happen if you were to do something like try to render thousands of list items into a view. The good news is that really this is limited to benchmark tests in many cases, because for real world applications, you often won't want to do the kinds of things where Angular's poor performance shows up. Another piece of good news is that a lot of these issues are actually solved in the next major version of Angular, which is Angular 2. So those are some of the downsides, but let's talk about the benefits to using Angular now. To start out with, Angular's got a very large community, and this means that it's easy to get help with issues when they arise. There are a lot of tutorials and how-to guides available, and people within the Angular community are generally pretty open to supplying help. Another benefit is that with such a large community comes a lot of open source tools and components that you can use in your own Angular apps. Angular's been around for a while, so at this point, Angular is pretty well battle-tested in the real world. It's definitely an enterprise framework, and many large organizations use it actively. And lastly, what is probably the biggest benefit, in my opinion, is that once you become proficient with Angular, you become much more productive when writing applications. You're also much better able to reason about the code that you've written when you go back and look at it six months or a year later. So again, some downsides to using Angular, but a lot of upsides as well. And I'm a firm believer that the good just outweighs the bad. All right, so I think that's enough theory about single page applications and Angular in particular. In the next section, we're gonna get our development environment set up and get cracking on the actual application.